Hey everybody, welcome to the Empower Living Product Talk. I'm excited to be able to talk to you today about frankincense essential oil. So many of you have been so excited about getting our frankincense oil for free this month. And so I thought it would be helpful in our product talk today to actually talk about what do you do with this oil. It's such an incredible oil that I wouldn't want you to go and, and leave this bottle on your shelf without knowing what to do with it. So we're going to talk today about how we use frankincense essential oil. So I'm just waiting for some of you to join me live. And I'm going to um, then go into the details. And one of the things that I, I love to make sure that people know about our frankincense essential oil is that it's actually a combination of three different types of frankincense. So there's lots of different species of frankincense throughout the world, but there's really only four that produce the kind of resin that you need to get a, a good essential oil. And so the three um, types of frankincense trees that produce the resin found in doTERRA's frankincense oil are Katari, Furiana, and sacra, so or sacra, however you want to pronounce that. So those three types of frankincense oil are actually in our frankincense oil. So we combine all of them. And we do that for a really good reason. There's gonna be lots of people, hello, hi Monique. <laughs> um, there's gonna be lots of people who will say, well, sacra is like the best frankincense because you know it was used in the days of you know Jesus, as we know one of the gifts that was given to the Christ child was uh, frankincense. There was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So frankincense was one of them, right? And so they'll say, well, sacra is the best one to use because of that. But the truth is that there's incredible constituents um, within the frankincense oil, but there's uh, something that happens very wonderfully when you combine the three different types of frankincense to produce the doTERRA frankincense oil. And for that reason, we have the best quality frankincense oil that's available in terms of its therapeutic benefits. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the therapeutic benefits, but before I do that, I wanna tell you the interesting way that we actually get our frankincense oil. So some people wonder, you know, like how can this be like $100 for this frankincense oil? But you need to know there's a lot involved in producing frankincense oil. It's not just, you know, getting from the rind of a lemon, for example. I mean, lemon oil is only $10 for this size but this one is close to $100 Canadian, right? So why is it so expensive? So let me help you to understand a little bit about that. So frankincense uh, oil comes from the resin. And if you ever see the way that they collect the resin, they have to score the frankincense trees. And if you know, um, you, maybe you've been outside and you've seen you know, pine trees and other kinds of evergreens that when, when there's a sap that's re released, it kind of goes hard and kind of gummy. Well, the frankincense is no different. When they score the tree, the, re the resin will come out and they, it will produce what they call frankincense tears. But the thing is that the first time that they score it, that doesn't produce the pure oil because there's you know, maybe some things that the tree has absorbed that aren't really helpful. So what they have to do is they have to clear that away and they use that for other things, for example, the fragrance industry or some companies might use it to produce an essential oil, but it's definitely not gonna produce the therapeutic qualities of doTERRA's essential oil. So they have to score the tree a second time. And when they score the tree the second time, they're gonna be able to actually create the oil from there. So when they, do, when they collect the resin from the tree, even then it's not the end of it because even though it's the second scoring, not all of the resin is gonna be the same quality. So then they have to have people who sit down with big baskets of resin on their, their laps. And it actually looks a little bit like rock sugar. So if you've ever seen rock sugar, sometimes when I'm doing pictures of frankincense oil, I'll throw out some of my beet sugar, which is a type of rock sugar, and it actually looks a lot like frankincense. So that's a cool thing about the frankincense oil. But they sit down there with these baskets of resin and then they have to sort through them. What's first grade, what's second grade, what's third grade? And they have to choose only the first grade resin to be able to use in doTERRA's oil. So this is a pretty intense process. And we actually have a picture of Emily Wright, one of the corporate executives at doTERRA, sitting down, you know, sorting through the frankincense and this is a very laborious job. So there's a lot of intensity that goes into it. Another cool fact about frankincense is that where it is uh, harvested, the number one cause of death in that area is falling, <laughs> kind of interestingly enough. And the reason for that is if you actually do 
um, a, a Google search for frankincense tree and you see the images, you'll see that where they grow is a little crazy. Sometimes it's on the side of a cliff and like I can understand why the cause of death would be falling. So that's pretty incredible. So frankincense is a, a precious oil and we know that they have to go through a lot of work to get And then of course from the resin, they have to then create the essential oil. So very, very thankful to have our frankincense essential oil. So what does frankincense do? Oh my goodness. I, I mean, we kind of need an hour and we don't have an hour. So we're going to kind of skip over some of the, the, you know, smaller things and focus on the bigger things. First of all, I want you to understand that with an oil like frankincense, we're talking about not just uh, physical benefits, even though there's plenty of those, but we're also talking about um, spiritual benefits, right? And emotional benefits. And so I have this book called, um, essential emotions and essential oils and listen to some of the things that frankincense whoops that oil's fallen all over which is a good thing because i'm giving them away but look at listen to some of the things that frankincense does for us emotionally so frankincense is known as the oil of truth uh, frankincense reveals deceptions and false truths and invites individuals to go to let go of lower vibrations which would be kind of like uh, the things that pull us down like uh, lies deception negativity and it helps us to create new perspectives based on light and truth. And in fact, all through the ages, frankincense has been used for spiritual rituals. And you may know this, but the Egyptians actually used frankincense quite extensively in their, um, in their entire lives. And the black that you see around the eyes of the Egyptians in the pictures is actually, you know, coal, but it comes from the re leftover resin that had been burnt and uh, the black that was left over they would use around the eyes as kind of their makeup but it wasn't just for you know visual purposes it was also because they believed it has spiritual uh, kind of protection and so on so we, we really can kind of see that this has been used in lots of different rituals from the beginning of time really and so um, it oil helps to create new perspectives it recalls to memory spiritual understanding gifts wisdom and knowledge um, that this and it is a powerful cleanser of spiritual darkness. Now, I think that there, personally, that there's a lot more that has to do with cleansing spiritually than just using an oil, but it definitely can put you into the frame of mind and the place where you can actually um, get a, a kind of heart connection with God. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Frankincense assists in pulling the scales of darkness from the eyes and barriers from the mind and, uh, and walls of the heart. Now, the cool thing about frankincense is it actually was one of the oils used in the anointing oil that the priests would have used in the Old Testament. So if you look at the recipe for anointing oil in the book of Numbers, you'll see that frankincense, cinnamon, cassia, and another one that I'm forgetting were all used in the combination, creating that precious oil to be used in the temple. And so it's kind of cool when we know now what some of the things that these oils do. So you can look up cinnamon and cassia another time, but let's focus on frankincense right now. We know frankincense to be antimicrobial, for example. And so you can imagine why that would be beneficial in rituals in the temple. Um, and so that, that's one of the things. Actually, I, I'm kind of questioning now whether frankincense was in that um, that recipe that there's there's a couple of different recipes and maybe in the original recipe for the temple anointing oil frankincense wasn't in it but for sure cinnamon and cassia were and one of the things that we knew, do know was that frankincense was used in various ways in the temple and the cool thing is the antimicrobial nature okay so that's a really cool element about frankincense it has a lot of benefits and some of them i'm not even able to speak because i have to worry about being compliant but I want to tell you two really cool stories because these stories really blew me away personally. You can imagine being involved in this business. I get an opportunity to see lots and lots of different things. I get to hear stories about people having breakthroughs that, you know, uh, really, really are, are important to me in my heart to know that what I'm doing is making a difference. And so the two stories that I want to focus on is one by a person that was connected to us and he had had a condition that I can't really... I can't label the condition, but he uh, experienced or he manifested symptoms of constant shaking, okay? And so he had had that since he was really, really young, I think around 12 years old. So he basically been dealing with this for a good 30 years of his life. And there's really nothing that the doctors could do. There was nothing that they, they didn't give him any hope. They told him it was genetic. 
And so one of the things that we know about frankincense is it's the oil that we always turn to when we're talking about the brain, okay? Um, it, frankincense oil crosses the blood-brain barrier and is very effective for uh, brain-type issues, okay? So I said, well, why don't you try this? Why don't you take one drop under your tongue morning and evening? And he did that. And after about six weeks, he said, well, I feel different. But he didn't have, you know, a noticeable difference in the shaking. Well, sure enough, within six, six, three months, he had virtually no shaking. And you can imagine what a big difference this was to this person's life, right? That was a huge, huge deal. And so that's when I talk about the cost of frankincense being $100. Well, that would last him about three months. Do you think it's worth it? I think so, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, the other cool thing is a story that I have from um, somebody who is sitting just in my living room, just a few feet away from where I am right now, in my dining room rather, and he was sitting there, again, I can't mention the name of the condition, but let's just say that he had um, an issue with his body which would require him to go through some pretty serious uh, treatments that he didn't want to go through with. And I have to tell you that there's something very sobering when you're sitting across from someone whose life is on the line and who doesn't really have a lot of hope. And in that circumstance, I said to him what I felt from my heart. And I said, you know, listen, I don't have all the answers. I'm a tax specialist. I'm not a doctor. But I do know this. I know that God created your body to heal itself. And I know that these are some of the stories and the, the things that I've learned about frankincense essential oil and about other essential oils. And I sent him away with information and I sent him away with hope. And within a couple of weeks, he got back to me and he told me that he wanted to purchase the oils I had recommended. And it was frankincense oil and DDR Prime. And so he called me just a few weeks ago before I left for Costa Rica. And he said to me, I would like to reorder the oil. So now we're talking seven months has gone by since he started his, his process. But he always calls me to reorder because he's not especially computer savvy. And so he, I said to him, so how's it going? You know, how is it going with your, your, um, your process? And he said, well, you know, he's kind of like, you know, rough and tough kind of guy, construction guy. And he said, well, you know, I was at the doctor and it didn't grow. And I said, wow, that's really awesome. I said, what is, what happens normally? He says, well, normally it grows two centimeters a year. And I thought, wow, you know, it's been seven months and it hasn't grown. That's, that's incredible. And then, and then I said to him, well, you know what? Maybe next time it will even shrink. And he said, well, actually it did. And then I think it was about 0.4 centimeters that it had shrunk. And, um, and then after that, he said to me, and you know what? I want to add to my oil, my order myrrh oil, because I learned about myrrh oil. And he talked about, you know, a series called The Truth About his issue <laughs> and he mentions about myrrh oil and so what was exciting to me was two things first of all that he had hope for the first time and I don't know how long that you could hear it in his voice that something had changed and he said I just want to keep doing what I've been doing because obviously something's working and so that was really exciting for me to know that even in my my inability my lack of having you know complete understanding of things I was able to offer him a solution that he could research on his own and that's the other part that was exciting is that he did continue his research journey and eventually he learned more than I even knew and he was able to tell me about the role of myrrh oil for his particular situation and so that to me was a blow away you know love frankincense love doTERRA love what I do story and so finally I want to end with some of the common ways that we use frankincense and that is of course we're going to be using it topically it is super Super amazing and wonderful for the skin. Um, it's <laughs> you like my tough man interpretation or impression. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's about it's about as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah, so we know that we can use it topically for the skin. Okay, so some people would call it oil of Olay because of what it does for the skin. I wouldn't because I absolutely hate oil of Olay. Anytime I put that on my skin, my skin turns into leather because I have a terrible allergy to it. But I do call this a very special oil for the skin, and I would never have my skincare routine without it.
The other thing that we know that we can use um, frankincense for in terms of skin is any area where there is uh, bumps or blemishes, right? And so it's very, very helpful to reduce the appearance of blemishes. And for myself, I get the really kind of painful blemishes when I was when I was eating wheat. When I got rid of wheat, they all went away magically. But when I was still eating wheat, I was getting really, really painful blemishes. And I would use frankincense, and that to me was the best thing. Um, when you're when you're going um, when you're when you're uh, looking for something to to boost your immune system to keep your immune system strong, I like to use frankincense in all of the remedies that I use for that purpose because it's so powerful for boosting your immune system. We know what it can do. Um, there's been some pretty cool studies done on um, skin cancer research, and I can say this because it's just a study that was done. So with skin cancer research, some pretty incredible studies done showing the effectiveness of frankincense oil for that purpose. Uh, I know people who use it really, really effectively, for example, on their knees, because one of the beautiful benefits of frankincense is what it can do to reduce that um, issue with knees. <laughs> it's really hard to be compliant. <laughs> so sometimes knees, sometimes, you know, elbows, sometimes other areas when we want to reduce um, some of the issues in those areas, frankincense is super, super helpful for that. In fact, we have an orthopedic surgeon within doTERRA who would prescribe this for his patients before and after surgery um, when he's doing work on them. So we know it's really effective that way. What it does for us emotionally, I mean, we just read parts of it, um, really helpful for feelings of abandonment, feelings of being disconnected spiritually, distant from your father, feeling unprotected, maybe some spiritual darkness. It's so, so helpful for that. But how about on a scientific level? How about listening to a study that happened where they showed that it increased serotonin production in the brain? How important do you think that is for people who struggle with a lack of serotonin production in the brain? Really, really important. So it works very differently than other things which would help with you know, lack of serotonin, which try to pool serotonin in your brain for longer, which can lead to kind of overdose issues. Frankincense works very differently in that it actually increases serotonin production. So how cool is that? If you want a happy oil, pull out the frankincense. So we want to use it for massage. We want to use it for warming. We, I mean, literally, um, when you look at the chemical constituents within frankincense, it is incredible. Literally, they, they, virtually all um, of the different types of chemical constituents that you can have in an oil are present in frankincense oil. We could talk about um, monoterpenes. We could talk about um, sesquiterpenes. Other things that I can't even pronounce, you know, so there's lots of incredible active ingredients. But what that means is that it has virtually unlimited application. In fact, for those of us in the oil world, we have an expression, when in doubt, get your frankincense out. So for those of you who got a free frankincense this month, you're going to have no lack of things to do with it. Really, you want to be using it in any kind of skin application any kind of emotional application where you need uplifting and support emotionally or spiritually, any kind of application where you might be needing topical support for an area that has been affected in a bad way. You know, it's, it's so boosting for your immune system. You do not want to be without your frankincense oil. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Now I get to choose two people to win the On Guard oil. And I'm going to choose it from the people who can answer these questions. So first question is, anybody know one of the types of uh, frankincense in our frankincense oil? So I mentioned three. Does anybody remember what one of them was? Who can remember what one of the types were? There's three. Three out of the four. Sacra, exactly. So Crystal, you can send an email to Empowered EO Living at gmail.com and say that you want a five mil uh, on guard oil. Okay, so the next one, next question is, um, let's see, I, I didn't actually answer this question, but does anybody know what area, okay, I guess it's not really fair because I know that the people who are gonna answer this correctly are people who are on my team, <laughs> so, so I won't answer what area it comes from. Um, but okay, I have another question. So give me an example where you could use frankincense oil topically.
What, what can you use frankincense oil topically for? Let's see. Yes, for the skin, because that would be topical. <laughs> Your whole body is covered in skin. <laughs> can you be a little... Yeah, okay, Sarah Chapman. Exactly, blemishes would be great. That's a great answer. So you can send an email to... Um, or a burn. Yeah, that's another good one. But uh, Sarah beat you. So um, powered EO... Uh, living at gmail.com. You can say that you want a five milliliter on guard. So thanks for joining. Hopefully this was really helpful to you and look forward to the next product talk. Normally they're Tuesdays at 2 p.m. I had to um, change the time today because I have another event at 2 p.m. today, but I uh, normally check back Tuesdays at 2 p.m. for the Empowered EO product talks. Take care. Bye.